Shalom, Zusha Kate here, taking the dogs to the kennel in preparation for going to Gathering of the Saints at Straightway. Um, wanted to talk to you today about the Canaanites, because I know you who are biblically literate know who the Canaanites are. Um, they were actually a cousin, distant cousin, to the Israelites. I believe they came off the line of ham, but you know, I'm sure you all know better than I do. And they're remarkable because of several facts. I don't know if you knew this, and it's true, and you can research it for yourself if you want. Uh, the Canaanites were the Phoenicians, and the Phoenicians in ancient history were known for their ships um, and their trade. Their whole government and religion were based, was based on the fact that they were such good shipbuilders and had great navigational skills. And they traded all around the Mediterranean Basin and out to the Straits of Gibraltar, right? Gibraltar is when you go past Africa, up north to Spain and the coast of England and all the way around Africa. Um, in, the, in the BC era and forward, they were still there when Rome was in its power and its heyday. The other thing the Phoenicians were known for, at least biblically, was the cedars of Lebanon um, came from the area that the Phoenicians owned, which was near the cities of Tyre and Sidon, which were on the eastern side of the Mediterranean. Um, and they were two city-states, and they were along the same coast, and they were pretty strong. I mentioned several times in history um, and in the Bible. The Phoenicians, their religion was the religion that was linked to Molech and passing your children through fire. And I've seen a couple of videos lately um, in the Secrets of the Dead series. One of them is about a cemetery that was found that had the Phoenician lettering and other um, identifiers that was full of urns and inside the urns were burned children bodies and animal bodies so their practice which was talked about in roman historian writings of sacrificing their children by burning them is is a fact they did that and that was one of the things that yahweh hated about their particular culture uh, and another reason I'm sure Yahweh hated it is because they were cousins to the Israelites, so they had to have at least, you know, from a far standpoint, heard, learned, talked about Yahweh and his laws and, and how he liked to worship. Um, their, their temples, which also had fertility um, goddess kind of orgy things going on in them, we're right next to the place where if you had a load of stuff coming off one of their ships and you were gonna do business and like check it in and sell it and whatever, it was right next door to the temple. So you could just get all your business taken care of in that one area. And the other thing about them was they never uh, really had land. They weren't farmers. They were all about that shipping and the maritime activities. And if you want to um, look them up biblically, look up Cedars of Lebanon and the King Hiram, I think his name, he brought uh, cedars, I believe, to Solomon, might have been David, and apes, and I think coconuts from Africa, it is mentioned in the word. Pastor, do you mind rolling that window up a bit? I'm going to cut down all the wind noise, thank you. Um, so these guys, there's, there's a German archaeologist now who studies um, their culture and they also were linked with the Celtic culture in southern Spain in the Balearic Islands or the Balearic area. Um, they were using the Celts as mercenaries. They would pay them to be their soldiers. And the Romans didn't really care for the Phoenicians. Um, probably business practices and also the fact that the weird religious rites they had and so Rome there was a power struggle I'm sure you've heard about Carthage and Hannibal and the elephants coming over the Alps and all that Rome and Carthage battled and Carthage lost and the they had established a very large city called Carthage on the um, northern 
coast of Africa and that fell and when that fell according to this German archaeologist he thinks ships full of these guys went down the west coast of Africa caught whatever wind or, or uh, sea tides or winds or whatever and were carried over to the South American continent and he has done um, archaeological digs and ex um, researching into the Chachapoya culture which is a culture in Peru on the top of very tall mountains and very rough area and the, the reason he thinks the Chachapoya are the Carthaginians are several there's several things he's looked at he's looked at the fortress they built there which is very much like a fortress off um, the southern coast of Spain the buildings are round, made of stone, very, very similar walls, etc. In the Blairic Island, or the Blairic area now, there are still stone slingers. And stone slingers were the main uh, army unit for the Celts and the Carthaginians, and also for the Chachapoya. And even now, there are people in that area of Peru who make a sling. And when this German archaeologist compared the both of them, the sling was exactly the same and they also carry it around their head when they're not using it. The pottery in both locations around the Mediterranean and also in the Chachapoya Fortress exactly the same. They had trepanning which is the uh, operating on the skull when you have too much pressure. It's an ancient uh, medical technique exactly the same in both cultures. So the kind of clincher for this German guy was if those indeed were the Carthaginians in the fortress, in the rural part of Peru, there should be DNA evidence. And there are Peruvians in that area with light skin and blonde hair. And there are Aztec writings on walls that show the Aztecs enslaving or trading for these Chachapoya women. There are writings in that area and legends about this group of strangers showing up and so he did a DNA test on them and he did a DNA test or we already have DNA for the areas um, northern Africa southern Spain and that DNA matched the blonde light-skinned people who are still in Peru are half of the European DNA and half of the Native American DNA and so <clears throat> we can say that the Canaanites are still alive and they are in the Peruvian highlands and still have a very small amount of that ancient, ancient culture. Obviously, they're no longer shipbuilders living on coast, etc. But I just find that kind of history fascinating, and I hope you do too. All right, bless you. Shalom.